Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Welcome along to our worship uh, this morning on Tuesday the 12th of May. Our service comes from a New Zealand prayer book. Uh, here are the pages you will need to mark. Page 69 for uh, Tuesday morning prayer. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 19, uh, page 216 is where you'll find that, Psalm 19. And of course, as always, page 56 for the Apostles' Creed uh, and 57 for the Lord's Prayer, which we'll do in Te Reo Māori this morning. Uh, as I said yesterday during our prayers, this week and next week, uh, we focus largely on our Māori saints uh, or saints who were instrumental in um, the, uh, the blossoming of faith in New Zealand. Uh, today we have not a Māori missionary, but uh, one who was uh, so central to uh, the Māori mission and indeed the spread of the gospel in New Zealand, and that's Samuel Marston. Uh, so a few words about him from uh, For All the Saints. Uh, began the first Christian mission in New Zealand. He was born in 1765 and became chaplain of the penal colony in New South Wales in 1794, uh, so just before he turned 30. There he met and welcomed Māori visitors and conceived the idea of a mission to New Zealand. Having obtained the backing of the CMS, Church Missionary Society, for this project, Marsden set up the first mission station in New Zealand under the protection of Ngāpuhi chief Ruatara, who we celebrated yesterday in the Bay of Islands in 1814, where of course he led the first Christian service on Christmas Day of that year. Marsden returned to New Zealand on six further visits to oversee the mission. He died uh, on this day, 12th of May, 1838. A sentence for today from Isaiah 45. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, says the Lord. Uh, as I said yesterday, well worth uh, doing some more reading and research. I don't have time to share the whole story with you, and I have to confess I don't know it terribly well. Uh, but uh, check out some of the, the wonderful stories of the spread of Christianity in New Zealand. Uh, thank you as always for joining me for worship this morning, uh, as you will have heard no doubt yesterday in uh, the Prime Minister's address, we will be continuing our online worship for a wee while yet. Our churches are able to meet but only with 10 people, uh, so I will send out more details about how exactly that will work for us in these two weeks, uh, but rest assured that certainly this uh, online offering will continue for uh, the next fortnight at least. Page 69 of our prayer books, let us be still in the presence of God. We will praise the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Alleluia. It's been a while since we sang it. Shall we sing it? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. You are all that I have, and therefore I will wait for you. You, Lord, are good to those who wait for you, to all those who seek you. It is good to wait in patience for the salvation of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 19. Uh, let us uh, proclaim it together. The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the vault of the sky reveals God's handiwork. One day speaks to another, and night shares its knowledge with night. And this without speech or language. Their voices are not heard, but their sound goes out into all lands, their words to the ends of the earth. 
In them God has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom, like an athlete eager to run a race. Its rising is at one end of the sky, it runs its course to the other, and there is nothing that is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The instruction of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The command of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous, everyone. They are more to be desired than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, pure honey from the comb. By them is your servant taught, and for keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern unwitting sins? Oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get the better of me. Then shall I be clean and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Fairly extended reading from Numbers, uh, and apologies, I haven't read through it beforehand, and so I probably will stumble over some of those uh, unpronounceable names. Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 to 33. Now when the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes, the Lord heard it, and, was, and his anger was kindled. Then the fire of the Lord burned against them, and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. But the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire abated. So that place was called Taberah, because the fire of the Lord burned against them. The rebel among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to eat, to look at. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its colour was like that of gum resin. The people went around and gathered it, ground it in mills or beat it in mortars, then boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the cakes of the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna would fall with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, Put me to death at once, if I have found favour in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. And say to the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat, for you have wailed in the hearing of the Lord 
saying, if only we had meat to eat, surely it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat uh, not only one day or two days or five days or ten days or twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, the people I am with number 600,000 on foot and you say, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month? Are there enough flocks and herds to slaughter for them? Are there enough fish in the sea to catch for them? The Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Then a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quails from the sea, and let them fall beside the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, about two cubits deep on the ground. So the people worked all that day and night and all the next day gathering the quails. The least anyone gathered was 10 homers and they spread out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against his people. And the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. In Luke chapter 5, um, verses 1 to 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A 
wonderful readings about the abundance of God uh, and the, the love of God to provide for his, his people. We respond with the Song of the Church, page 70 of our prayer books. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became incarnate to set us free, you humbly accepted the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. Let us not be confounded at the last. The Apostles' Creed. Together we proclaim, I believe in God, the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Ko akono nei tātou e to tātou ariki, ka inoi tātou. E to mātou mātua i te rangi, kia tapu tō ingoa, kia tai mai tō ranga tiritanga, kia mia tia tau e pai ai ki runga ki te whenua, kia rite anō ki tō te rangi. O mai ki a mātou a e nei he taro mā mātou mō tēnei rā. Murua o mātou hara, me mātou hoki e muru nei o te honga i harana ki a mātou. Aua hoki mātou e kauia ki a whakawaia. E ngāri i whakorangi a mātou i te kino. Nau hoki e te rangatirutanga, te kaha me te kororia. Āke, āke, āke. Amene. And our colleague this morning, uh, remembering Samuel Marsden. Gracious and eternal God, you called Samuel Marsden to lead the first mission to the Māori people. Grant that, following in his footsteps, we may bring to this land the good news of great joy in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Time for our unstructured prayers. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for the grieving. We pray for the dying. 
We pray for those who are unwell. We pray for those uh, who support those most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for a world so drastically changed uh, by this pandemic. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost employment. We pray for those who struggle to pay bills. We pray for those who hold the weight uh, of leading businesses and of holding the employment of others in their hands. We pray for politicians on both sides of the aisles. Lord, give wisdom to those who need wisdom. Give your loving support to those who need that. Help us to ground ourselves in you and help us to ensure that we our work toward a society we all have what they need uh, as the basics of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our families. For those that do not yet know you, we pray that they would find you. For those family members who are in need of support, we pray that you would give it to them. For those family members uh, whom we struggle to connect with, May your spirit of reconciliation be with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering Samuel Marsden, we give you thanks, Lord, for the spread of uh, the gospel in these lands. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Tikanga Māori. Pray for Bishop Richard Wallace. Pray for the church in Ferry Road of Tihiparapai, the Good Shepherd. We pray for Rawania and for all who work at leading holy services in that place. Pray too, Lord, for the Church Missionary Society, uh, that organisation that uh, supported Samuel Marsden and continues to support the spread of the gospel around the globe today. Lord, be with all of those who work at CMS. Continue to give them boldness in proclaiming your gospel. Continue to give them sensitivity to the cultures they find themselves in. Continue, Lord, to give them success in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift to you those things uh, that we have endeavoured to pray for. We pray for ourselves, that you would give us all that we need, and that you would help us to be content with what we have. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in your name we pray. Amen. We conclude our prayers with our morning collect, page 71. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we continue to dwell in Christ so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. Alleluia. Amen. Kirikoto, have a blessed Tuesday. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you get up to in this uh, level two days after Thursday, of course. Um, we've still got uh, today and tomorrow in level three. Uh, so uh, be safe, be well, be blessed. Till tomorrow. Kakite. <laughs>